So hey guys, hi. So debugging is always a part of programmers which we really try to try hard to avoid but only make more bugs in the code. So coding without bugs is something the best programmer would find hard and which is why you always should debug and but many times you always end up with the console log which we see. Now in this video we're going to talk about the console log and how to use it uh, smartly. So if we do a normal console bug right here and you just if you just do a console log you'll see a lot of uh, options which we actually get in sophisticated any IDE. In this example we are using VS Code, the console log and console war. Okay. So what we will do is if we do a console if we do a console war, it will look something like this. And if you want to have an error which you want to throw up, you can just write error and put something like this. So this is how usually uh, you can spot a bug or warn at least a message to the user while you are debugging the issues. Now the next thing which I really want to talk is called the console uh, time operation. So timing operation. So you want to always see how much the piece of code took right to run. So you can use something called console or uh, log time. So how it works is uh, what we do is is like you you can define a function from in between this code okay you can write console log timer at the top and you can define any big function and you can write it below so what it will do at the end is it will log how much time it actually took so as you can see it shows loop timer took 3.70 ms so it is very actually useful for very CPU in intensive application that will take some time. So let's say like neural network or any HTML canvas reading. This is actually good. Next thing which we are going to talk about tracing how the code uh, got there, right? So let's say if you want to see what actually like how the things went during a flow. And if we try to see this, you can see uh, and now if we try to call this you can see it gives a trace so uh, you will get an output like this so what it shows from the enormous function which is actually the main javascript code called the random function which actually called the trace next is logging console logging a group message so let's say you have a list of console log and instead of writing each one by one you can actually group it so if you have a console like of let's say test one right and you have a my message group at the top one and then you define the group and at the bottom okay all the test to message right you can all as you will see this is a normal console log and the all the group one you can see at the bottom it will show up like this okay so by now uh, you you might have a lot of uh, consoles in between so let's clear it out with using console not clear and things are actually cleared now let's say let's talk about the tables uh, in short so let's say you have two persons person one and person two and now if you try to do a console log of them it will look quite messy but there's a better way to do this so how we do this we use something called console dot table and if you try to press enter you might see all the details of person one and person two in a very good way the next one which we are going to talk about is the CSS in the console. So I know this is unbelievable but this actually happens. So if you go to any big websites of Facebook or something, you will always see their console has uh, something different uh, CSS applied. So how to do it is you, you have to just define a console log as usual. And as you can see we are defining a person C here. This is where the magic lies and after that we are actually defining the color and solid and everything and now if i press enter you will see we have a different javascript but with but with css so thanks for watching this video if you have any doubts you can let me know see you in the next video guys thank you have a nice day